all right <clears throat> what's good everybody like share subscribe you know what it is we're going to start off nas welcomes his favorite rapper for special performance so he welcomed his special his favorite rapper for for a special performance and if i remember correctly it had to do with wu-tang one of the wu-tang clan members so and it was funny because we had a method man story that same week which is crazy all right deuteronomy chapter seven <clears throat> Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto thy son from following me, that they may service other God. So will I, hold on, so will I, will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. You'll suddenly die right there. If you teach them to do other things like i'm thinking right now i know a lot of different parents that were teaching their kids to do witchcraft type stuff devil related stuff that passed away early when i'm thinking right now that's crazy they were teaching them like the, that witchcraft stuff that black and i was learning in church and i was telling them hey man that's like witchcraft that's evil i was telling them this and their parent died early randomly and the parent was doing it too that's crazy now i get it it says suddenly but thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their uh, groves and burn their graven images with fire. <clears throat> For thou art an holy people unto the Lord, all caps, thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, hold on, unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord nor choose you because ye were more members than uh, any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen right there enslavement right there he what he did was he took he died on the cross before your pr imprisonment came so you never went to imprisonment so he, he basically gave it all up to save you before you needed saving so being that was the case he laid it all on the cross for you with love guidance all the stuff and all the qualities he's demanding of you in this world to show to each other because he already put it all on the line and sacrificed for us all because he gave it up before you were even born and he said he thought of you and when he says he thought of you he thought of you by name he knew your name isn't that crazy god knew your name before you were born so if you say your name in your head that's who he was thinking of he was saying all those names to himself when he was thinking of it because it says he knows you by name that gets crazy and we're not even there yet we're getting there that's crazy okay face of the earth the lord choose you because you were more members than any people for you were the fewest of all people but because the lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers hath he lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of the bondman from the hand of the of pharaoh king of egypt know wherefore that the lord thy god he is god all caps the faithful god which keepeth covenant in mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a th to a thousand generations in this commandment unto a hold on and and repayeth them to his face right there when you pass away you see god face to face for those he wants to see right there to your, those of you who are deemed not well you're going to see him briefly maybe but it's going to be for a split moment because he doesn't want to spend time with you but and i presume you're only going to see hear him you won't really see him like we're going to see him in a righteous part because he doesn't even want to see you, which means that you're not seeing his face because he probably hides his face from you and you get judged and you just get thrown in hell like a piece of trash, like the garbage. 
How many people go to the garbage and just drop something off without looking? Same thing he's going to do. He's going to throw you in hell without looking at you because you're nothing to him at that point. Because when you leave here and you never proclaim them, he don't know you. So he just drops you in the trash like he's walking by. You guys like, yo, you guys aren't thinking right. He's a spirit. Mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repayeth them to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them right there. There's no excuse not to do them. That's why he says there's no excuse. So everything he says you're to do. He had the law of Moses. It worked from him when he came. Repentance. Everything has been trying to show you this ending that's coming. And that's what he's going to do. All right, you guys got to read Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1 to 2, then verse 12 to 26. Let me see, because I got part of the reading right here. Okay, salutation. Oh, hold on, hold on, no, no, no. All right, I'm gonna, the, I got the reading somewhere, but that's what you guys got to read. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1 to 2, and then verse 12 to 26. I'm going to find that reading I think I have, but let me finish reading this and then I'll, I'll do the reading if that's it. I get to the bottom of this, then I'll know. All right, now we're going to start at Acts 15, chapter 20 to 29. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from of fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every Sabbath day then pleased it to uh it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their com own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas and of and Silas chief men among the brethren and they wrote letters by them after this manner the apostles and the elders and brethren and greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and uh Cilicia for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your souls, subverting. We're not supposed to do judgment of any kind. We're supposed to subvert men's souls. Would it look it up? What does that mean? That means help to change. If they're facing down, we help them face up. If they're facing right, we help them face left. If they're facing left, we help them face right. Meaning you help them and encourage them with the word of God to turn from their sin or whatever they're dealing with by scripture. Stop playing with me. All you dudes still judging sin right there. You're going to get judged by God. And it doesn't matter how long you preach because you're doing wickedness. You're making it harder for him to reach the person. You subvert which is reading the word of God. If you're doing it any other way, it's wrong. You got to be reading this Bible in order to help a person subvert. You can't do it any other way. You're not Jesus. By scripture, your souls saying, ye must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us being Assemble with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right there by scripture is what you're supposed to not be scared to do. Hazarded your life. That's you showing yourself approved to God, risking all that you know to proclaim his name. Go look in third world countries where they try and quiet the word of God. Those people that speak up about it, what they do to them. They're in heaven. Doesn't matter. They made it. Those people that did that to them, they're going to go to the pits. For sure. For sure they're going to the pits. They took somebody out because they proclaimed the name of Jesus. They're in super trouble. They're in danger. I bet you bad stuff all over the place happened to them. They don't know how to get away from it. Because they now a curse is on them. Remember Proverbs, the Proverbs curse for them not liking a person because of Jesus and killing them or taking them out or hurting them. You get cursed because God don't want to see you. He don't want to be near you. He never, ever wants to even acknowledge your existence. You're going to torture for sure. You do that. Take somebody out because they proclaim Jesus name. Are you crazy? To whom we gave no such commandment 
it seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to lay upon you the Holy Ghost into us to lay upon you no greater burden than the necessary things that ye abstain from meats of offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication which if ye keep yourselves ye shall do well fare fare ye well right there everything we're supposed to do back in that short sentence yet on everything on moses law on his law everything we're supposed to fight these are all the things and then we're supposed to subvert others because we know what God wants, we subvert others, teaching them the law of Jesus Christ by scripture right there. Stop playing, man. And people keep saying it's king disease. Time to talk about it. It's king disease. It's not king disease. Everybody like king disease. But see, that's where your confusion is. Because king's disease brings a different ending. So a lot of guys probably say king's disease, king's disease, and they're not going to get it. But see, when you roll with Jesus Christ, he reveals all and explains it and interprets it the right way so you get it right the first time through. That's why I do things the way I do it. Right now, all praise the most high God, Jesus Christ. All praise his holy and terrible name. He's holy. He's terrible. He's going to do these dudes terrible. And when he does, they're going to be screaming, begging. It's too late because they lived a horrible life. Doing whatever they wanted, however they wanted. Never listen to him at all. Doing wickedness because they didn't like, like a little kid throwing a temper tantrum. Now, let that demon throw a temper tantrum on your dead body. Now, now take that. <laughs> I all praise the most high God, Jesus Christ. He's like, take that. And then they go to hell and burn. And they're screaming. You know what? You know what the demons down there are doing? They're cursing God day and night. So I'll tell you all a little bit of the future. So you understand. These demon things down there are cursing God day and night. So they're in the pits of hell. Looking up at God, cursing him day and night, like throwing curse words. I mean, the worst things you could say to a person, they're saying it in hell while they're getting tortured too, because it's hot and they're burning. So what happens, the souls go down there and the people that go down there, their souls, they end up cursing God as well because they're down there and end up there. Well, listen, your mindset of doing that in the first place was with you and always will be with you if you are going to do that at all. That's why when they curse God, when we're on the net, it's wicked. It's wickedness. If you're up there saying, God this, God that, saying, oh, God this, God, you are blasphemy. You're going to perish. I'm talking to all you YouTubers doing it, and I know y'all see me seeing you. You do it because I'm watching. You're going to perish. I promise. You're going to perish off this earth. You're wicked. That's evil. You're not supposed to do that. God's above you. And where's what's going to happen? You're going to pass away at random. And it's going to be boo, cry, cry over your passing. But no one's going to be sad and actually in the world. You're going to, boy, girl, where you're going, nobody's going to care. They're going to begin to slaughter, begin to continue of onslaughting your soul because you're wicked. And I see y'all daily. I just stare at y'all and laugh. Keep doing it. I'm praying the curse. I'm making the curse stronger. Keep doing it. I'm going to make sure every monster y'all see on your horror games is there waiting for you. I'm going to make sure of it. I'm going to make sure. I promise. Every monster you're playing in your little game is going to be there before you. Because you want to curse my God. Every single beast, every single demon you see on your game, I'm going to make it there for you when you die. So when you die, that's going to be there waiting for you. To slaughter you and destroy you before man and everybody and every type of beast in the pits of hell. You guys are wicked and you're going to get ghost. Now, let's with that said, let's finish strong with what Nas said, nigga, for real. Second Kings chapter eight. Let's get it. And it came to pass as he was telling the king how he had restored dead body to life. He had brought a dead body back to life. When these cowards die, what's going to happen? Who's going to bring them back to life? Who? Nobody, they're going to stay dead in the pits of hell because they're wicked. 
Who's going to bring them back? Nobody. God's going to bring back people for me. He ain't going to bring them back. They're dead and going for good. In the pits of hell. Stay. Like a dog. Stay. In hell. Stay. Why they burn and say and beg like, please, please, stay. Kick their hand down. Stay and burn. In hell. Cowards. Burn. Want me to throw a match? Burn. They're cowards. All these dudes are cowards. I'm on yo, all y'all are cowards. Y'all against Jesus Christ. Step up to die, coward. Declare it now. He says he's gonna kill you right now. Take a, do it now. He's gonna cut your breath. Look up and curse him. He do it. You cowards don't do it and stay alive. Look up and scream a curse. Why won't y'all do it? Why? Do it so you can die. Now. Do it. Coward. So when I do this thing and when I'm preaching like this, stay focused. If you guys won't look up and curse God, shut your mouths. For real. Y'all cowards. For real. Y'all some bitches. I'm just keeping real. Y'all, they some bitches, yo. They really some bitch made dudes. For real. Yo, I'm just keeping it 100. They're bitch made. They're really soft. They go where I go. They will get murked the first day. They Somebody walk off the block and snap their neck. Somebody walk off the block and kill them on the spot in front of everybody. Because they don't care. Because they're wicked. Like these guys are really like that. Let's go, yo. For real, man. I had to get that up because it's real. These dudes are wicked on the net cursing God. They're going to perish and watch what happens. I'm not going to feel bad because they curse God every day. You guys are going for good and I'm going to laugh. King of Syria was sick. What's about to happen to him? He's sick. He's sick, okay? He's sick. The King of Syria is sick and it was old. It was old him saying, the man of God is come hither and the, and go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord by him saying, shall I recover of this disease, this ease? <laughs> so Hazel went to, and that's the name they're trying to say. Is of all land. No, it's a, it's a name of the Bible. All right, let's get it. Hazel went to meet him and took a present with him, even of every good thing. Yo, of Damascus, 40 camels burdened and came and stood before him and said, Word play, nigga, and said, Thy son and king of Syria has sent me to thee, saying, Shall I, how be it, the Lord hath, hath went, went, that he shall surely die. And he settled his countenance and steadfastly until he was ashamed and the man of god wept these dudes will never be ashamed of cursing god yo they curse them so much they're never ashamed they're never ashamed they curse them so much every day i watch them curse them they get a dollar why it's wickedness did you see that right there let me the word play yo yo god in every somewhere he tells you to end Everywhere, somewhere, I could show. I'm going to start really breaking it down to y'all. There's stuff that I don't really break down to y'all. Because I'm like, are they really going to get it? Look, look, get this. And it said, will he recover? And it said, no. Steadfastly, ashamed. And the man of God wept. That, and they said, look, up here. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hold on, hold on. Present with him. When we see God, is he not going to have a present for us? Eternal life and our consolation, the prize. Yo, all praise the most high God. Yo, right there. In every single book, I could do this. Like clockwork. I don't break. I'm going to start really breaking it down. I could tell y'all much more. I'm going to really start telling y'all. Every single place I could find the beginning and end everywhere, Alpha and Omega. Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ as my witness in every book somewhere references the beginning and the end. Every single area somewhere. And something you read, it means double the things. Because God is a monster like that. He's not lovey-dovey. Don't play. So let's read. So here, you guys are going to have to check out 2 Kings. We're looking at chapter 8. You're going to read 13 to 26. 13 to 26, if I'm not mistaken, for 2 Kings. All right. Now, I'm going to read 13 from there. And Zale said, but what is thy servant a dog, but he should do this great thing. And Elisha and answered, he told me that thou shalt be king over Syria right there. 
he okay listen the king had a vision that he was going to be this person that's going to be king over syria was a servant now but they were going to be the king but he went to him and said yo i need you to move a certain way because when you become king you're going to do a lot of wicked things so i need you to think a certain way and move so he started trying to divert him from there subvert him he tried to subvert him to a different mindset and as you read, you'll understand about it working. You're going to read that part. I don't have to explain that. You're going to read that. That's what I gave you the reading for. Again, 2 Kings chapter 8. You guys are starting at the 13 because I read to the 12th. But you're going to read 13 to 20, 26 that, to finish it off. And you're going to see he, tried to, he tries to subvert him. But you're going to deal with that too when you're out there. You're trying to change people, get them to understand God. But even so you're dealing with that, they're going to bring wickedness against you. But you got to stand steadfastly against the wickedness and proclaim the name of Jesus fearlessly. No fear and we're getting it there. No fear. And what happens? Nothing at all. You got to believe in him fully. Like that's how serious it is. And I'm very serious about it because I know these pastors, they sweating things, but they're sweating out just to get a dollar off you. I'm sweating out to get truth to you. There's a difference because they're doing it. So I'm not all, but a lot of them do it to get a dollar out you. They'll do it to give you a, a simple message. They're not doing it to build you to a conclusion. They're try, supposed to take you to the end. I'm trying to take you to the end the way they're supposed to, okay? I'm going to take you from the beginning to the end of this book. That's what I'm doing. And it doesn't go in a straight line. It goes in and out, in and out. Then that's why we're doing it the way we're doing it. You got to trust in God. All praise the most high God, Jesus Christ, right now, y'all. Right now, hit that like button, share, subscribe. We're going to be back. All right, we got this.